Here's a guy who doesn't understand an atheist meme. So what's wrong with this meme? Let's talk about it. All right, so this meme says, yes, I'm an atheist, but just because I don't believe in your God does not mean that I don't believe in anything. I believe in compassion, kindness, love, logic, equality, empathy, myself, integrity, honesty, and more. Now this meme is interesting because most atheists claim that they reject God's existence because there's a lack of scientific or empirical evidence for God's existence. If we're to take this objection seriously, then we should probably reject just about all of the things in the meme because most of those things can't be proven scientifically or empirically. Now I will say that the meme does equivocate the meaning of the word believe. Usually when people say they believe in compassion, kindness, love, logic, equality, empathy, myself, self, integrity, and honesty, what they really mean is that they value those things. Whereas when people say they believe in a god, they mean that they believe that a god exists. But even if this meme did intend to say that atheists believe these things exist, you can, in fact, empirically demonstrate the occurrence of compassionate, kind, and empathetic behavior. You can empirically test logical deductions, whether people are treated equally, and to what degree people are honest. And of course, I can easily empirically demonstrate the existence of myself. I'm doing it right now by showing you this video of me talking to you. But also, the reason I don't believe in a god is not just because I don't see empirical and scientific evidence of a god. I'm an atheist, which means that I don't understand what a god even is. Therefore, I don't know what scientific evidence of one would look like. Think about it. Could you prove compassion, kindness, love, logic, equality, and those kinds of things by looking at science? Yeah, why couldn't you? Not to mention, if somebody thinks that you shouldn't believe in things unless you can prove them by science, well that claim itself cannot be proved by science. If you take that claim on its own, I agree. I don't think what Immanuel Kant called categorical imperatives, imperatives that are self-justifying, exist. I only believe in what he called hypothetical imperatives. These are imperatives that are contingent on some goal. For example, if you want to win the lottery, you should get a ticket. Or to phrase this differently, the only effective way to win the lottery is to get a ticket. That's an empirical testable claim. With respect to the claim you shouldn't believe things unless you can prove them with science, I would only agree with that insofar as it means if you want your beliefs to most consistently match your experiences, you ought to only believe that which is corroborated by science. Or in other words, your beliefs will most consistently match experience if those beliefs are scientifically corroborated. Now can that claim be scientifically tested and corroborated? Yes, it can. And to make matters worse, science itself cannot be proven by science. That would be a problem if science itself were a claim with a truth value. It isn't. It's a method. It's a means of finding the ideas which most consistently match experience and observation. Now can the claim that science is the most effective means of finding ideas that most consistently match experience be corroborated by science? Yes, it can. And science is based off of things that cannot be proven by science, like mathematics and logic and reason and that sort of thing. Thing. First of all, no it's not. Science ultimately goes with whatever observation reveals. No matter how airtight a logical or mathematical deduction may be, if it doesn't match observation, science rejects it. Secondly, the only reason science employs math and logic is because mathematical and logical deductions do consistently match observation. In other words, math and logic are employed because they've been scientifically tested and consistently shown to work. So yes, they can in fact be corroborated by science. Now for an atheist to take this kind of logic, but also reject God's existence by claiming that there needs to be scientific or empirical evidence for God's existence. I hope they got a good reason for why they seem to arbitrarily reject God's existence by giving God a different set of standards than they would give these other immaterial things that they believe in. Well, I don't, because everything you've said can't be proven by science is as provable by science as anything else. And also, none of the things you've listed are immaterial. Kindness, empathy, honesty, etc. are all actions carried out by people who are made out of matter. I don't even understand what it would mean to say that these actions aren't material. The point of this is that the things that atheists typically use to reject God's existence are the same things that were if they would apply this equally towards other things besides God, it would rule those things out as well. But assuming that the atheist doesn't take this style of an objection, and that they accept things that are immaterial into their worldview, now what can we say about this meme? So we can ask, is the atheist irrational for believing in these things? Or do they just know that these things exist given their experiences with the world? You know what it's called when someone believes in something because of their experiences with the world? 
Empiricism. You know, the thing you seem to think is incapable of demonstrating the phenomena listed in the meme. Now, I think it's worth noting that some atheists like Sam Harris believe that we're not just physical only beings, but that we also have an immaterial consciousness that can't be reduced to just the physical. So at this point, we can just ask something else. If there's things in this world that are immaterial and that can't be reduced to just the physical sciences, and we all believe that these things exist, does it really make more sense on an atheistic worldview, or does it make more sense to have a god in the picture where immaterial things are at the foundation of the world? Well, from my perspective, immaterial things are nonsensical, so both views are incomprehensible to me. So of course some people can say that these immaterial things really do exist and that atheism is still true, but by doing so, then atheism can no longer be a superior explanation for the world. I've never heard anyone say that atheism is any kind of explanation for the world, let alone a superior one. Atheism, depending on which definition you use, is either a doxastic stance, specifically the lack of a belief in a god, or a description of the world. No definition of atheism I've ever encountered says it's an explanation of anything. And the reason why is because a world that includes god in it already has immaterial things at its foundation, so these immaterial things naturally fit into that worldview a lot easier than they would atheism. So in other words, the atheistic view only makes more sense than the spiritual view if everything is physical. That could only be the case if the only way that the universe could be based in the immaterial is if it is based on an immaterial god. I don't see why this would necessarily be the case. Why couldn't a universe with immaterial things in it be based on some non-omnipotent, non-omniscient, non-loving immaterial thing? Most people find a physical-only world very difficult, if not flat-out impossible to believe. And I not only find it impossible to believe in a world world that isn't only physical, I also find it impossible to even conceive of such a thing. I don't understand the difference between saying something is physical in at least some sense and saying it exists. To say that something is in no sense physical seems to me to say that it in no sense exists. Including some atheists like Sam Harris apparently. In a physical-only universe, we should conclude that we're just physical beings without souls. Right, makes sense. That when our loved ones die, they no longer exist. Yes, that's obviously the case. The joys that we experience from music and art are really just things that helped our ancestors survive. Well, there'd be no way to have them if they made it harder for them to survive. That meaning only consists of stories that we just tell ourselves. Well, no, meaning is whatever goals that we give ourselves. And our tendency to create and pursue those goals developed because they helped our ancestors survive. And that love and beauty are really just illusions that are caused by chemicals firing in our brains. No, they aren't illusions caused by the chemicals firing in our brains. They are the firing of those chemicals. They are not some product of neurological activity. They are the activity itself. A physical-only universe also seems to entail that humans don't have free will. Think about it. If we're really just only our brain, then a chemical has to fire at the same time or before we have a thought in order for us to have that thought. No, the chemical activity is itself that thought. Thoughts are a kind of electrochemical action. So this would mean that we don't really have free will. Instead, we're slaves to whatever our chemicals in our brains do or how our brains are governed according to the laws of physics. Well, what would free will be then? If our thoughts and decisions were not determined by the laws of physics or anything else, they would be random, and we clearly don't behave randomly. In order for you to truly have free will, there has to be an immaterial aspect of you that can cause the chemicals in your brain to fire at least sometimes. This assumes that it's impossible for material events to occur without some cause. Quantum physics shows that sometimes things do just unpredictably happen. While our decisions can't defy the laws of physics and are constrained to that degree, they don't have to be immaterial to involve some element of chance. And lastly, moral outrage doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense in a physical-only universe. Yeah, it does. Its evolutionary advantage is clearly demonstrable. In the first place, if we don't have any free will, then what right do you have to get upset with other people for doing things that they were only programmed to do? Well, if I was also programmed to get upset, then it's rather irrelevant whether I have a right to get upset. If getting upset is something I can't control, then I'm going to get upset whether I have the right to or not. So if you're going to complain about the immoral things that the religious people do, what right do you really have to get mad at them if they have no free choice in the matter? Again, if I'm pre-programmed to be angered by their behavior, then it makes no difference whether I have any right to be or not. 
You're treating them as if you really do believe in free will. Exactly the opposite is true. I'm treating them as though I think my protest can possibly have some deterministic influence on their behavior. I'm treating them as though I expect my treatment of them to cause or at least partially causally influence their behavior to change, which is entirely consistent with determinism. Secondly, moral outrage doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense in a physical only universe, and the reason why is because you can't point to or touch right or wrong. I don't believe in right or wrong in any objective sense. I believe that there are behaviors my conscience can tolerate and things my conscience can't tolerate. But are these things like love and human rights, are these things really just an illusion? No, love is a neurological process and human rights are commitments we choose to make to one another. Now several more examples could be added to the list, but I'll go ahead and just leave it at this. A world where we're just physical beings without souls and things like free will, beauty, love, justice, morality, good and evil, and things like human rights are just illusions doesn't seem to be the same world that we live in. I agree. I don't believe that any of those things are illusions. Some are brain processes and some are inventions. Although it's not quite clear to me what free will is even supposed to be. If we have to assume that we live in a physical only world in order to maintain the belief that God does not exist. I don't think we do. I don't believe that non-physical things exist. But if they do, I don't see why they would necessitate that a God exists. Even if your earlier voiced contention that a world with immaterial things in it is more consistent with the existence of a God is true. I still don't see why it necessitates a god to exist. Then maybe it's best that we start reevaluating our assumption that we live in a physical only world. It's not an assumption. As best I can tell, it's a tautology. The most honest thing to do is to try to follow the evidence where it leads and be as consistent as possible with the way that we come to believe or reject things. Oh, so now you want to be empirical all of a sudden. So. Why not just adopt a view of the world that actually explains the world that we live in? I don't see how an incoherent assertion can be an explanation of anything. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.